I am learning and I am working through assessing my students differently in our astronomy unit. So I am, I have gone through building thinking classrooms and mathematics. Though I teach science and physics, this book is so applicable to what I do every day. And I love this chapter on data collection and building a better model than the point collection system. So basically point collection is like you would tell a, a student, you know, we've got a quiz, this is your opportunity to get some points. You've got a test, you can get a lot of points here. This is more collecting data throughout the unit so that you can more fairly and accurately assign students a grade when you have to. So this starts by breaking down your curriculum. I have all my curriculum expectations for this unit written on the left side of these pages. And then breaking each expectation down into basic, intermediate, and advanced. Basically, what would a basic understanding of that curriculum expectation look like? What would an intermediate understanding of that expectation look like? For example, down here we have the curriculum expectation of explain the causes of astronomical phenomena and how various phenomena can be best observed from Earth. So a basic understanding of this, in my mind, when I broke this down, was explain what a shooting star is and how it forms. Explain how craters form on celestial objects. Explain the reasons for night and day. So very simple understanding. An intermediate understanding could be shown by a student accurately answering how a solar eclipse forms or a lunar eclipse forms or explain why we see the different phases of the moon, explaining the reason for the seasons. That would be more of an intermediate understanding. And then an advanced understanding would be explaining how the auroras are formed, including why different colors form, explain when and why a comet would have two tails. So I just went through my curriculum for each expectation, breaking it down into a basic, intermediate, and advanced understanding. In some cases, there was no basic understanding, like for this one, I didn't feel like there was a basic understanding of that because it was pretty complex. And for some of these, there was no advanced understanding. So you notice here that the ones where there's no advanced understanding, that ends up having um, a mark or a weighting or a grade out of a lower amount. So um, what I'll do throughout the unit is I will basically collect all the data that I can throughout the unit. Let's say a student understands that the sun is the center of the solar system, they get a check mark there, and they've shown me that a few times, but they can't do or won't do anything above that, then that would give them a two out of four. Um, in this case, let's say they're able to like consistently get the basic one here, and they could really well like understand this one, but they couldn't get the advanced one, that would get them a three. And if they got all through this, that would get them a four. The book goes into more detail about when you would give the students this like rating, I suppose. Um, if they have like two consecutive check marks showing that they can independently do that. But there's also more of a, um, a breakdown of the system that they use like check marks when they demonstrate it individually. An S if they could do it, but they did a silly mistake. H when they had some help either from the teacher or from a classmate. G is used when they've demonstrated that in a group. And X is when they've attempted it, but it was not right. And N for whether that was not attempted. So that's the system I'm going to try. I'm going to adopt it. My hope is that a few things will happen. Um, my hope is that this works out really well and that both the students and I can see very explicitly whether they have a basic, intermediate, or advanced understanding because we have examples for each one. I also hope to find where my biases are in my curriculum. So I probably spend a good chunk of time explaining phenomenon and asking students about the different phenomenon and how to explain them. But I want to know for my own practice, like, does that mean that I'm not collecting enough data in other curriculum expectations? So I want to see, like, do I have 12 check marks here and none for this expectation? 
So I'm hoping that that will help me balance not only how much time I spend on certain topics, but also how much time I assess students or the number of times I assess students on different topics and whether I have that balanced as a teacher. So I'm hoping to learn from this. Um, if you want to join me on this, that'd be fun. We can read this book together. I really love this one. I think this is one where it's worth having the copy of the book. You know me, I'm a big audiobook person. I listened to this on audio and then just had the, the images available to me, but it's great to be able to go back. So if you want to join me on this, just let me know. I'm really happy to talk about this. I'm really happy to share my breakdown as well.